Now, I recently ordered something that only I read a few days ago, and as you can see, I haven't opened it yet. Now, I haven't done any unboxing videos, even though they, they do seem popular on YouTube, mainly because you usually can tell what's inside the package by what's in the description box or the title of the video before you actually see the package open. So, uh, in that respect, for the first week or so, I'm not going to put anything in the title or the description box on what's in the package. So you'll only be able to tell what's in this by watching the video as I open it. I just hope it's what I ordered and not something for the wife. It feels a wee bit too heavy for lingerie anyway. But we'll get started. Spoil a thing. You know, knife. Ha ha. I don't think this is going to stay a mystery for long. Yep. ATN Short Track. So, let's have a look at the packaging. Shot Track HD High Definition Gun Camera Capture HD Video with this revolutionary gun camera. As you can see, it's designed to be used with a variety of things full bore rifle, shotgun, pistol, and even a bow. You can watch your recorded footage on a variety of devices like TVs, smartphones, and tablets. Ah, this side's got far better information full HD video 1920 by 1080. 30 frames per second, built in microphone, 5 megapixel camos, micro SD card that you have to buy yourself, 5 power magnification, now that's important, water resistant, 1CR123 battery, brilliant lens, and it is mountable on 3 different sides using a standard weaver mount that is supplied in the package. It also has a dainty little handle, why I don't know, maybe it's to help you carry it to the till. The package is also quite well sealed, so I'm going to need some form of cutting tool to open it. Ah, this will do. Looks like I need another cutting tool again. And after another neat bit of surgery, we're in. Now, I have to admit, it did take me a few minutes to realise I had to pull the rest of the sticky tape off to get into the camera. But thankfully, with that, we can now have a good look at the camera. And it's a dainty little thing. So, what's in the other box then? Okay, we have one operator's manual. And then a quick start up guide. We have one rubber lens cover. A CR123 battery. And what's in the bottom of the box? Uh, nothing but fresh air. Okay. Ah, we've got two different sized Allen keys to help mount it to uh, a weaver or pick a tiny reel. Okay, maybe I'm being a bit fussy here, but does that not seem to you like a lot of packaging for such a small camera and a few extras? Anyway, back to the camera. And using the larger of the two Allen keys supplied, we can remove it from the last of the packaging. Unfortunately, the weaver reel that was screwed to is just part of the plastic packaging. However, 
The weaver mount that screwed onto the camera is all metal with spring loaded jaws. And you can see the other mounting options on either side as well as the bottom. Then we have the on and off switch at the back of the camera, which is just a simple toggle design. Now to fit the camera to your scope, you're going to need something like this. It's a scope ring to weaver rail adapter for torches. This one's from Nico Sterling and it's designed for a scope with a 30mm tube. And the weaver rail on the camera should clamp down onto it like this so it's going nowhere. The battery compartment is found on the front of the camera and is simply unscrewed with a coin or a washer. Then you can simply slide in the provided CR123 battery and screw the plug back into place again. It's a bit of a long thread and a wee bit footery to get started, but once it's tightened in you'll not be shifting it again for a good while. And the little rubber lens cover that's provided simply just pops over the lens. The quick startup guide that comes with it just basically tells you how to fit the battery, SD card, how to mount the unit, how to switch it on and off and how to zero the unit that comes with a laser before going into a different language. The operator's manual goes into a bit more detail giving you the features, specifications, the sensor, video file, range of focus, uh, storage, operation time and so forth. Then it goes on to similar information to the quick start up guide. Uh, how to set the time in the SD card, how to mount the unit, how to switch it on and off. Also how to zero the unit that comes with the laser, which is not the unit I have. As well as the product uh, warranty information. Once you have the time and the date set on your micro SD card using your computer, you can insert it into the camera by first removing the little rubberized cover from the SD card slot, sliding the card in and then popping the little cover back into place again. Then switch the unit on for 10 seconds to set the date and the time. Now to give you an idea of what the 5 power magnification of the camera is like on air gun size quarry, I set a decoy magpie up on the hedgerow at various ranges. This is 10 yards away. This is 20 yards away. 30 yards. A shaky 40 yards. And 50 yards. So I took the little shot track out to a local farm that I've got permission to shoot over. And as you can see, I got some decent footage of jackdaws feeding in the silage around the cattle sheds. Now, these birds are about 20 yards away, and with the 5 power magnification that the shot track films in, you can still pick out individual birds with a good bit of detail, as well as what's going on in the surrounding area. Unlike a GoPro or other action cameras that only film in one power magnification, so it makes it very difficult to pick out distant targets with uh, any detail. I was however worried that that small lens on the shot track would suffer in low light but you can see here the camera picked out this magpie in a dark gloomy shed quite well. So now I've been able to use the shot track for a few weeks what do I think of it? Well it certainly seems to be a well built robust little thing and gives a better picture in low light than I thought it would. And it seems to be right and easily mounted, whether you use the weaver mount provided or like me, fit a piece of weaver rail to the bottom of the camera so I can easily mount it on and off my uh, rifle using an upside down weaver mount. The shot track is that small and light, you hardly notice it on your rifle, especially compared to the JVC camcorder that I used to use. Plus the fact the shot track is designed to be weapon mounted, while a camcorder is not. The on off switch is quite easy to operate, whether you've got gloves on or not, so no small footery buttons to try and press. 
The little rubber lens cap is a wee bit primitive, but it seems to do the job. Just remember to take it off at the right moment, as I've forgotten a time or two. The slot for the SD card is tight, and it's a wee bit difficult getting it out unless you've got long fingernails, but that's just being a wee bit fussy. Now, one thing you might need to keep in mind, that even though there is three different mounting options for the camera, on either side or the bottom, whether or not you use the weaver mount or the weaver reel like I have, these are actually designed to fit the camera on either side of a firearm or below it. As the instructions state that the logo, shot track logo, has to point down the way towards the ground. This means if you mount the camera on top of your scope like I have here, the image you record is going to be upside down as there is no other screw holes for mounting the camera the right way up, but this can be corrected using your editing software. Another little niggle is that little CR battery only gives you two hours of continuous recording time. Now if you're only switching the camera on and off for each shot, you should get plenty of clips through that. But it means you're always going to have to carry a spare battery with you. Now there is a low battery indicator on the device, but it would be much nicer if there was a rechargeable option for it. That way you could recharge the battery every time you came back from a hunt so that you were always going out with a fresh charge. Though these are just minor little niggles I had. One thing I did notice when I had it fitted to my spring powered HW97 was that the point of aim changed. Now it wasn't much, about 15 to 16 millimeters lower at 30 yards than what it usually was, but it definitely would be advisable to zero the gun with the camera fitted to it. Now for those of you who probably are thinking the same as me, 5 power magnification isn't much. You may notice in the next few shot clips in the bottom left hand of the screen that I use the editing software to zoom the picture in and out to give you an idea what sort of quality there will be by doing so. Now hopefully before long I'll have hunting footage of the ATN shot track in use on my spring powered HW97 as that's what I bought it for as it is designed to be firearm mounted so should be able to stand the recoil far better than an expensive camcorder. But if you're looking a second opinion, have a look at Vermin Hunters TV's review of the ATN shot track as that's what really inspired me into looking into getting one.